So my dad made a big promise to myself and my sister, my twin sister, that he would have come back and pick us up from school the first day of school. Now you may think, not a big deal, but it was a big deal because at that time I was living in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. And we're in our hometown in Milan. So we woke up in the morning with my sister. It was October 1st, 1969, which also gives a hint about my very young age. Very young age indeed. And um, my father wasn't there. We were kind of disappointed. But we went to school, we were excited. And when we left, he was there. And we can see him from the distance. There was a tall guy, almost two meters tall, red hair. So we jumped at him and we told him all the stories. We were so excited. Every detail was repeated at least three times. So we went back home. Mom prepared lunch, about uh, three square meters of lasagna per person. <laughs> and then at the end of lunch, our father said, well, I need to talk to both of you. So he took my sister first, and then he took me to another room and said, Paolo, I need to talk to you. And he never called me Paolo. My nickname was uh, Paulino. And so by the fact that he called me Paolo, I knew was something important was coming. I said, Paolo, from tomorrow, don't tell me anymore what you've been doing, but ask yourself if you learned something new, if you helped other people, and if you really love what you're doing. Because the rest really doesn't matter. Then he stood, he went back to his dining room, he got his espresso, and he returned back to Brazil. He has kept his promise. He traveled three days to be with us for two hours. So I've been thinking about these three questions for pretty much 48 years. And they did become my own compass of success. Because almost every day I wonder if at least I can tick the box in one of these three questions. So what I want to do with you is actually reflecting on these three questions and tell you some stories. So the first one, have you learned something new? Now think for a second, life expectancy. 200 years ago, life expectancy was 40 years. And it's been 40 years for 200, for 2,000 years. Since then, it's increased by 20 years per century. So last century was 60, now is 80, and by 2060 will be 100. This is a phenomenal change in our society, in what we learn and how we learn it. Our children will do jobs that right now don't exist. And we're assuming they will be doing jobs that probably will disappear. It's a completely different change. Because the mindset that we'll probably go to university, you stop studying, and we're fine for the next 40 years is gone. For many reasons. So life expectancy is one dimension. So we need to transform ourselves in an unstoppable learning machine. So let me ask you a question. How many of you today believe that your current set of skills and knowledge would be sufficient to take you to the end of your career? How many of you? None of you. That's exactly the point. <laughs> we all know it. So how then can we become an unstoppable learning machine? So in order to explain this, I asked an Italian friend to help me out to explain this. I invited him, Leonardo, because he's probably the only person older than me in the room, okay? <laughs> and um, so when you look at Leonardo da Vinci, what word comes to your mind? Tell me. Sorry? Invention. Inventions, what else? Genius. Genius, what else? Creative. Sorry? Creativity, what else? Innovation. Innovation, artist, poet, philosopher, sculpture. He was all of them. Because a quintessential Renaissance man was somebody who was completely, constantly curious about learning new things. And I really believe that all of you are small Leonardo da Vinci. And I'll tell you why. You've learned another language you probably learned how to see life from the perspective of somebody else. You listen to music, not from your country. You fell in love with some musician, some food, not from your country. You become maybe a musician, you've learned to learn another language. You did babysitting, you learn how to be responsible. You play in a sports team, you learn how to be a team player. 
you coach a sports team, you learn how to motivate people. All of us is already a small Leonardo da Vinci. All of us have learned something. And we learn to connect the dots, to develop what is called contextual intelligence, which is the reason why we will win against machine. The capacity to connect dots, to create solution in something new. But you know, knowing something about subject or, or disciplines is great, but also be curious about people. This is not the curiosity of trying to understand and gossiping about people, that's completely different. It's about knowing that the person beside you, he or she knows more than you on something. So every single encounter is a magic opportunity of learning something new. Every single moment of, of encounter is a moment of magic. And who are the best teachers? Children, bambini in my beautiful language. Why? Because you learn so much from them. And in fact, I've learned a lot from my little daughter. I was working on a, on a paper. She came to me and she said, Daddy, I want a kiss. And I said, oh, I'm busy right now. Come back later. She, saw, she, she was three, she was like 20 kilos. She looked at me this way. She was outraged and she said, Daddy, never ever refuse a kiss from somebody who loves you. She slammed the door and she walked away. <laughs> So, so, you learn a lot from her, from, from children. But then let's, let me play another, another game. I'm going to tell you a word, and you have to tell me the opposite of this word. Okay? Can we play this game? So, if I say cold, if I say short, if I say rich, if I say dark, if I say success, failure, Stop here. Stop here. If you think that the opposite of, of success is failure, think about. Think about when you were a child, or when you were probably helping your children. When will you learn how to walk? We were not born able to walk or able to talk, correct? But every single time we fell, we stood up. Once, twice, nine, ten, fifty times. There is a Chinese proverb that says life is about falling seven times and standing up eight. So we knew, without somebody told us, that actually the process of failing is a process of learning. We know it. And then eventually we go to school, we go to university, we go to some organizations, and we change the mindset. We are terrorized to make mistakes. And so I invite you to rethink that the opposite of success is not failure. The opposite of success is lack of learning. And that's exactly what Nelson Mandela said. I never lose. I either win or I learn. What a beautiful phrase. The second question from my dad was, how are you helping others? And I wanted to introduce you to a, a, one of the amazing people I met in my life. Her name is Sabine. Sabine, she's an actress. And after seeing tons of refugees coming on TV, there are 60 million of them. Half of them are children. They spend, on average, 19 years away from home. She said, I just can't, can't just watch her on TV and complain. I've got to do something. So she went with a bunch of people called Clown Without Frontiers, not to be confused with some of the politicians that have been elected recently. <laughs> I'll get into trouble one day, but until that day, I'm going to have a lot of fun, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, Sabine decided to go to Lesbos, a small island in Greece. And literally, with a red nose, she said, all I did was welcome them and give children five seconds of love, five minutes of joy. That's my job. And what we've learned, that people that help others are usually the happiest ones. Now, I can see some of you being quite skeptical. To say, okay, Paolo, nice story, but who's going to put a red nose to go to Lesbos? Fair point. So let me ask you another question. Who do you think are the most successful people? The givers, the takers, or the matchers? The givers means the people that give time, energy, maybe just five minutes, they respond to an email, they put you in contact with somebody else, they help you. They share knowledge. They welcome you in. These are the givers. The takers are the ones that 
realize that you exist when they need something from you. And the matches are the ones they wait. Say, so, okay, I'll give you something, but I expect something in return tomorrow. Who are the most successful people? What do you think? Sorry? Yeah. The givers, exactly, provided they understand the difference between pleasing people and helping people. This is, is a big difference. And guess what? This is also the one that gets jobs. And I have some experience on this one. 80% of the jobs are not given because you send your CV to an organization. It's because your reputation of a giver, because you build trust, because people know who you are. This is how you get jobs. Which brings us to the last question from my dad. Do you love what you do? And I have to say, I've learned it in a country that I immensely love, is Guatemala. I was in Antigua, Guatemala, and uh, there was a street artist called uh, Gerardo, and he was doing these watercolors. And I wanted to buy one from him, it was $25. But when he wanted to buy one from me, the, the only one that he got is the one he was working at that moment, he had nothing else. And I was about to leave. So I said, Gerardo, you know, the, the watercolor wasn't finished. I said, okay, at the end of the day, I'm Italian, so I want to negotiate. So I said, listen, I'll give you $15. I said, no, I won't sell it to you. I said, okay. Give you 20. I said, no. Okay, listen, Gerardo, I'll give you 25. Paolo, you don't understand. I'm not selling to you. Why not? Because I really want to buy it. I said, okay, listen, I'll give it for you for 50. Then I started to get a bit upset to say, do you think I'm a fool that I'm going to pay twice as much for something that's not over? And I said, you know why, Paolo? Because you're removing from me the joy that I have in doing something that I love so much. That's why you have to pay me twice as much. Now, I still have the doubt there was a marketing strategy, I have to say. <laughs> but I really believe, sincerely, that I got a wonderful lesson. Because if somebody has to pay you twice as much for you to stop doing what you're doing, it means that you really love what you're doing. And as head of human resources, so many people come to complain about salaries and bonuses and all the rest. And I really believe the issue is not money, it's in their heart. And the last point is about purpose. Because loving what you're doing is not enough. And I read many years ago this beautiful phrase from Mark Twain. The two most important days are the day where you're born and the day in which you find out why. So, when did I find out why? If you think about it, it's a beautiful phrase. And I realized why in probably the most improbable of the places. I was working for the World Bank at the time, and I went to Cameroon. I never set foot on this place before. And the driver came to pick me up, his name is George, and he said, well, it's a long drive, but on the way, I want to take you to a special place. So he took me to this special place, and it was actually a small village, similar to this one, where he showed me a well. I said, can you see the well? I said, yeah. I said, well, look, at, look at the, the tag, look at the plate. I look at the plate, it was uh, built by the United Nations and the World Bank. So, you know, this well did not exist when I was a child. And so I remember my mother walking six kilometers each way with two buckets to get water. By the time it was too raining, at the time she was sick, at the time it was too dangerous, and even when she was able to get the water, the water was polluted. So, frankly, we had a very miserable life. Then one day you guys came and you built us. Now, I have absolutely nothing to do with this well. But I said, I'd like you to meet my mom. So he took me to his village, very close by. He, I waited for a couple of minutes, and then this woman came. Very tall, she was wearing a purple dress. She looked at me, she didn't say a word, she approached me and she embraced me. We stayed this way for a minute, maybe, and then she left. With dignity, grace, wisdom, beauty. That was my second day of my life. So I really hope that you did find your second day of yourself. So, 48 years ago, since that conversation with my dad, and almost every day I wonder myself, and I say this to my daughter, have you learned something new? Are you, have you helped somebody else? Do you love what you're doing? 
and knowing that you're going to forget everything I said within 60 minutes, can I at least ask you a personal favor? <laughs> now, I want to hear yes. Can I hear yes? I, can I ask you a personal favor? Okay, go, yes. Go. Can you at least uh, remember, can you at least remember, never refuse a kiss from somebody who loves you? Okay? 